Can you I want. taste your juice? Hey folks, P. Bissardo. How's everybody doing out there? I hope you guys had a great weekend. Um, the Radix V1 right here with a resolved issue switch. Let me go ahead and have a vape on it. You know, there's a reason why uh, I put out the videos that I do. Uh, it's not to piss anybody off. It's to potentially give you guys a better experience, okay? A better uh, vaping experience, uh, maybe better figure out where you want to spend your money. Uh, this is never to make anybody angry, especially a vendor or a manufacturer. It's just me giving you my honest opinion and telling you exactly what I experience with these products, okay? So when something goes bad, um, it's not to make anybody mad. It's just to let you guys know what went bad. Uh, in this case, we had a bad switch. Um, now, when something like that happens, there's really two ways a vendor or manufacturer can approach it. They can approach it the right way or they can approach it the wrong way. Um, this particular vendor, I think, approached it the right way. So let's, uh, let me read to you um, some of this email that I got from them. Uh, I would like to thank you for the video. Thank you for the video. For the video where I showed the device failing, he wants to thank me for it. Um, which brought to my attention the issue you had with the Radix button. Uh, as you can imagine, I was very alarmed to learn of your experience. I performed a root cause analysis as soon as I saw your video and would like to inform you that I have discovered the source of the problem. Uh, we had just received a new batch of buttons from our manufacturer that addressed the sinking button issue which you had in the past. With that being said, the defective parts have now been isolated and the problem contained. Uh, your Radix is the only one outside of the building that has this mode of failure. Um, please allow me to correct the issue. Okay, allow me to... So they did. They corrected the issue. Um, again, I want to thank you for bringing this to my attention. I have learned from my mistake. I have learned from my mistake. Okay, we're human and have already put new testing procedures in place to avoid this problem in the future. I have personally tested all of the Radix boxes that are ready to be released to the vaping community. I can assure you that no boxes will leave our facility with this issue. We strive to provide the highest quality product possible and you have helped to make that happen. Okay, and that is from Ron Peace or Pease, uh, and he is the vice president over there at Carbon Method. Okay, so um, my my compliments to you, Ron. That's the way to address an issue. Head on, let people know you had an issue. Let people know that there was a mistake. Um, and you know when you I think I think personally when when you do things the right way, people will forgive you. People will uh, you know enjoy using and and purchase your product. So. Uh, uh, way to go, Carbon Method. I can now enjoy my Radix box uh, once again with a uh, switch that no longer has that issue at all. Uh, and I will continue to use this because I do happen to like the form factor on this one. Uh, and if I uh, notice anything from this new button, uh, you can bet that I will let you guys know. Okay, so in the meantime, let's go ahead and have a vape and we'll get on with the rest of this video because it's going to be a long one. The Radix. What does the Radix have inside of it? Uh, the Radix has inside of it a DNA 30. What is a DNA 30? A DNA 30 looks a lot like this. This is actually a DNA uh, 20. It's a modders board, okay? It's this little board with a little screen here that you can purchase on its own, not necessarily in a device, and you could take this and you could build your very own device, your very own mod, using this as the brains of the mod, this as the power of the mod, this as the power regulation, the variable wattage controller of the mod. Uh, and it comes from a, a company that we've come to know, um, Evolve, Evolve Vapor. A little history behind Evolve. I think that if it wasn't for Evolve, okay, we would probably still be looking at variable voltage, okay? But Evolve was the first company that put out a variable wattage, a power regulated device and that device was called the darwin all right so that's what a darwin looks like a lot of people called it a tire inflation gauge because uh, it wasn't uh, to me it's still not the, the 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 nicest looking device out there okay but it was a very unique device for its day what came after the darwin after the darwin came the kick um 
and I actually have a kick one and a kick two right there. Uh, here's the kick one, here's the kick two. Uh, and the kick was a little piece that you sat inside your mechanical and you now had regulation. You now had uh, power regulation, you had adjustable wattage, you had some protection uh, added into your device. So that's what the, uh, the kick one and the kick two uh, did for you. And then, then of course, uh, we get into the DNA 20s and the DNA 30s and uh, new stuff coming from them. And I know some of the new stuff that's coming from them. Some of it is very, very exciting. Uh, some of it is going to change the way we do things or the way we look at things. Uh, and of course, I can't tell you what those things are uh, because they have asked me not to do that. Okay, so I won't do that. Uh, but we might, if we listen really closely into in this video, uh, get an idea a little bit of, about what's coming. So we'll just have to listen real close, okay? Um, so what is this video? Uh, this video is a unique look the same way we did over uh, at Zen's place, the same way we did over at ProVape. They invited me to go and visit the Evolve facilities, and there's actually two of them. Uh, there is an assembly facility, a smaller facility in Ashtabula, uh, Ohio, and then there is the larger uh, board manufacturing uh, facility in Akron, Ohio. Okay, Both facilities are in Ohio. Now, something you may not have known about Evolve, because the person that we see and the person that we think about when we talk about Evolve is Brandon, okay? Uh, I've interviewed Brandon several times. We've talked to Brandon. We've had photos with Brandon, uh, and you would think that Brandon is Evolve. Well, no, that's not the case. It's actually Brandon and John who are Evolve, and in this video, you get to meet John, too. John is an interesting guy, okay? John is... Um, he doesn't like the G word, okay? So to his face, I won't call him the G word, genius, okay? Uh, but behind the scenes, I will a little bit, okay? This is a smart guy. Uh, this is a wildly smart guy. Um, an impressively smart guy. Uh, so we're going to talk to John in this video, and uh, we'll see if you get some of the, 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 the same perception that I got uh, from talking with John. My degree is in engineering, um, and I come from kind of here. So I started, not Evolve, but the other company that I own, or one of the other companies that I own, straight out of college. Um, we went into manufacturing electronics, specifically power electronics. Um, so that company does DC-DC converters. Brandon got into it because he was interested in building a box mod. Not not a company to make box mods, not a line of box mods, not even 10 box mods. He wanted to make one. Just one. That was but it, it wouldn't go away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we were, people were putting those five years ago into very early electronic cigarettes. Um, and then Brandon wouldn't go away, so we eventually started a company to make these cigarettes, and here we are. Evolve's manufacturing has actually grown out of the manufacturing of the company I've been doing for the last 10 years. Right. Okay, and, uh, so you're, you were already familiar with, with oh yeah, manufacturing? We, we were, manufacturing was old hat before. Okay. They were already manufacturing service mount electronics, so it was, it was, a, it was a good... Uh, Okay. It was a good meeting. <laughs> Walk me through your um, your workspace here, John, if you don't mind, because uh, I uh, notice it's, it's very neat and tidy and very organized. It, it uh, is very neat and tidy and very organized. Right. Let me get my laptop out because okay. I'm we, surprised you were able to find that so easily. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I mean, you can challenge me. I can come up with one. <laughs> but just because the the sheer number of computers requires. So one of the things that I like a lot is monitors. I'm not sure if you've picked up on that. I, no, I have noticed Well, One it. of the reasons that monitors are so nice is they're a vertical workspace, so I can't really set anything on them. Right. So, and so in that, your case, that might be a good thing. It might be a good thing, so that's important. <laughs> um, okay, so some of this is just random detritus, but anyway, these four monitors all go to the laptop. Okay. Laptop, I use that for basically programs, software development, things like that. Um, this is a spectrum analyzer. It's for testing um, radiated emissions or high frequency stuff. Uh, this is an oscilloscope. It's for, you know, an oscilloscope, you know what an oscilloscope is. Right. That's a moderately but not super nice one. Okay. Um, this is actually a programming head for the auto programmer. Right. This, this, I also use those for when I'm doing development. Okay. This is a programming head for a product that's not out yet. Um, this laptop is actually connected to our programmer's office, so I can be sitting here 
working on hardware and testing that, and he can be seeing and running development at the same time. That's okay. why he's got extra videos and whatnot. These are just power supplies and motors. This is a uh, hot wire anemometer. It measures um, air velocity. Okay. Uh, now at that point, John's phone went off, and John uh, got on the phone and he talked to you because his phone was going off all day long. Now when John's on the phone, he, he does not sit in one space. No, um, he literally puts miles on his sneakers, walking back and forth and into the shop and out of the shop and outside. And it was just—he's a tough guy to keep up with. Uh, so he did uh, this for a whole lot of time, and then he came back and he finished talking about his workspace. Okay, so hot wire anemometer, because how fast airflow is moving is interesting to e-cigarettes. Okay. Uh, debuggers, programmers, chargers. Um, this is a gripper for one of the robots that you saw. Okay. So we'll be building that. Uh, these actually are linear motion stages. Okay. Um, like you saw on the auto programmer, right? Because we're building two more auto programmers. Now we see motors here. Now you did yeah. more here. That I mean, this is this is a multi facility, right? So I've been doing uh, electronics and owned this company, not Evolve, but my other company for ten years. We were doing everything we do with my other company is switch mode power. So we were doing voltage regulators five years ago, which is how Brandon sort of got tied in with Found us you, right. in the beginning okay. and we still do any amount of that but so yeah from my company rather than Evolve's side we do all sorts of power stuff everywhere from a couple of watts up to 510 kilowatts okay. so the whole oh you know 30 watts it's a lot for an e-cigarette 40 watts oh maybe we could go something really big right. like it's not a 15 horsepower motor so right. it's not a scary power level you won't be putting out a 510 kilowatt e-cig will you, will you? Uh, or, or board well i mean that regal vape 4000 was a really <laughs> good idea so i think i mean that certainly got our uh, creative juices flowing <laughs> i'm honored that you would even mention it well okay so i see more monitors in another state oh yeah yeah here. so this is um this is my other computer where I do more hardware layout. Okay. This is my picture of my lovely wife. Now, speaking of your lovely wife, does she huh? get to see you a lot? Uh, she's a doctor, so she doesn't get to do anything but work a lot anyway. Oh, okay. So it, that works out okay. Okay, so a doctor and a genius. Uh, a doctor <laughs> and an engineer. <laughs> we really dislike the G word. See, I told you. Okay, so like this is Anakin's board. Okay. So this is the physical layout of the board. This over here is the schematic layout of the board. And then I have triple monitors because often you'd also have, you've got like the board if you're working on the board, but you want to be able to refer to the schematic and you want right. to be able to refer to the, part. the parts. Right. Yeah, so that's okay. that's why this set up. And, um, now is this board, this layout, is this yes. your design? Yes. It is. Um, so. All the Evolve products are, if you're talking about the hardware layout, they're all my design. Um, everything from the Darwin to all the stuff that we don't talk about yet because it's not out yet. <laughs> um, of which there are some interesting ones. Um, also, there's a lot of, I don't know why there's a comb on my computer. <laughs> or super glue, or batteries, or potentiometers. Certainly, I don't know why we've got any ego twists, or vacuum generators, <laughs> or ego twists, or tapping fluid. <laughs> Or old cell phones. Oh my god. Or motor drivers. Uh, I know why that's there. Uh, or not on yeah. board. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's also like this is DNA 30. This is, um, well, I don't know if we want to talk about that or not. Okay. You can figure out what it is though if you care. <laughs> um, this is one of the temperature controlled newer boards. This is one of the temperature controlled newer boards. One of the things yeah. we're adding to our new boards is optional breakaway rails because how do you mount a DNA is often a valid question. Right. The answer is well, sort of with tape or spit or gum or glue or hope. Right. <laughs> um, so what we're adding to the new ones is rails that have, oh, um, okay. so you can put it in a slot or you can screw it down. Yep. And those, the reason these are so cut away Mm -hmm. is you should be able to just take a pair of pliers and snap them off if you want the classic DNA form factor. Okay. Um, but yeah, we've got that. I think this is, pro yeah, this is a DNA 20. I don't know why I've got an Evic board. When you go on vacation, do you relax? I'm not very good at relaxing. I didn't think so. When I go on vacation, I rock climb or hike long distances yeah. or, I, you know, before I was flying, I was skydiving. Relaxing. And, and you fly, you see, you're, yeah. you're a pilot? Yeah. Okay. Um, and your brother does programming here. 
So genius, oh, the G word runs in the family then, huh? We don't like okay. the G word, right. but whatever runs in the family, yes. Okay. Oh look, a clone DNA. Um, you know, these are parts for stuff that'll be coming out shortly. Um, this is one of the Inakin boards. So, you know, just... A lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. If it's somewhere in the e-cigarette world, it's somewhere on my desk. Um, Evic board, probably don't need that either. <laughs> so you have a machine shop here too, I do. right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, you know, a lot of the um, uh, the automation that we saw back there, a lot of the, the jigs and stuff like that, you're mm -hmm. producing all yeah, of that stuff here, right? Yeah, one of the things that as a company Evolve and other endeavors of ours, um, we do a lot of stuff in house. And the reason we do that is because nobody can tell us no except cold hard reality if we're doing things in house. So, by designing the boards to our own manufacturer, we can do things that no board house in the world would, would let us get away with. And if we need like a jig or a fixture or a robot or a piece of automation, and it's really a priority, we can just walk over to the machine shop right. and do it rather than saying, oh, well, that'll be three months. Right, right. Um, so, you know, the machine shop's not as advanced as the electronics because it's not our primary focus, but right. we've got a bridge port CNC, we've got a Bell CNC. Um, we just picked up this brother, which is, I mean, it's a very fast Yeah, it looks CNC. like a, a newer machine. It's there. actually brand new. Okay. It's cut one part ever, because this we're designing to load and unload with a robot, Okay. and the robot just showed up, it's still cute in its box. So, you know, this is a press, back when we were doing the DNA 12s, if anybody remembers those, we sold what, maybe seven of them total? <laughs> um, you know, so we would do like the heat sinks there, we do other heat sinks, we've got automatic saws and dust collectors, and other air compressors. Um, obviously this is more my space because it's a ton messier. It looks like one of your spaces. Well, yeah. you know, so the, the goal is die with all the toys and I'm, we're getting there. You're winning. You we're are, we're getting you're there. definitely winning, yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, Machine shop's not our primary focus. Right. We're a board house that does some machining rather than a machine shop that spits out a few right. boards. So, I mean, you guys do have some fun here, too. I noticed the rock climbing wall. Yeah, right? we got a climbing wall. Every tech company has a climbing wall, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> I haven't really been doing a lot of it since I got married, but... And, and I noticed bumper cars? Yeah, we... Um, so, one of the things that's not e-cigarettes that we do is a lot of motor drivers. And one of the things our customers do with motor drivers is crash stuff into stuff. So if you're stress testing a um, motor driver, there's very little you can do that's more stressful than building it into a bumper car, building another bumper car, giving it to a pair of kids, and then just letting them go at it. So it's not it's not a toy, it's an official test it's, it's platform. It's an official test platform that I not only <laughs> expensed, I took an R&D tax credit for. <laughs> Quite legitimately, I yeah. and my accountant feel, because we, I mean, we do a lot of that. Like every so often, you'll see Brandon running around with like a clear plastic tube of a mod, things like that, because we really try to test for worst case. So worst case for a motor driver that's kind of bumper car size is a kid slamming into another kid or a wall or something repeatedly. Worst case for a uh, e-cigarette is like a badly done coil or a shorted coil is just a short. So one of our tests is we'll just short it and leave it overnight. Right. Um, which all of our things should survive, but if they don't, I wasn't my fault um, <laughs> you know so so it's it's important to us to build it for worst case rather than build it for well I think this will probably work most of the time right because anybody can do that right so now I've heard rumors of a, of a roller coaster and an automated office chair uh, so well, it wasn't automated it was radio control so that <laughs> the the office chair was way back that was probably eight or nine years ago um, so we had motor drivers, we had to test them, we had a bunch of office chairs, everybody likes the rolly spinny office chairs and this space was less full at that point so you could just wheel from one side to the other. So we took a couple of Harbor Freight drill motors, took off two of the caster wheels, added you know, skateboard wheels, or I forget exactly what they were, but added wheels to the motors, stuck those on, then we had a radio control office chair so you'd have somebody sit down and then unbeknownst to them you could just drive them away or something <laughs> whatever. Um, which was a lot of fun until obviously the harbor freight ten dollar drills gave out but so yeah that was again an important test platform absolutely uh right. the roller coaster was something i built back in college it was a kiddie coaster it was about 12 feet tall about 300 feet long um it's been taken down for 
years and years, but one of these days I'll make another one. And insurance purposes, probably. Oh, I won't even, so we actually built it for a um, vacation Bible school at a church and ran like 600 kids through it. Nobody got hurt. And then they were like, oh God, we got to take that down. I guess they <laughs> probably didn't say, oh God, we got to take that down. <laughs> um, but, you know, so no, that got, that got disconnected right. and disassembled and all of that rather quickly. But it was still, I mean, we built a roller coaster, so. That's kind of fun. But yeah, test test for worst case, and worst case is somebody built an awful mod and then they're chain vaping into a sh dead short. So right. we feel like we need to survive that just like the motor drives need to survive a kid running into a wall until they get bored or run out of batteries or things like that. Right. So I really think that that is an excellent look into the mind of, of John, okay? John is a little too smart for his good. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wildly intelligent, absolutely. Neat and tidy, not so much, okay? So much like a video in the past, we are gonna start the tour off with a um, an interview uh, with John and Brandon, okay? Uh, and I do apologize for the background noise, but it is an operating facility. Uh, then we're gonna break off from that. We're gonna start to see their assembly facility. We're gonna start to see uh, the, um, the actual production facility for these boards. And then we'll wrap this video up a little bit later on with the uh, the completion or the continuation of that interview. So let's talk to John and Brandon. So Brandon, we've seen you. Yeah. We've seen you out and about. We've seen, I've, I've interviewed you before. We've right. seen you at the meets, uh, always running around. Um, we have not met John yet. Okay. So, hi, John. How are you? Hi. I'll Is be it... over here if you <laughs> <laughs> get, get back. Get back in. Like, so you're not the um, you're you're not the, the the front guy. No. Right. But um, you have a whole lot of uh, influence and and stake in this in this company. And you know, meeting you today, uh, just let me say, very very impressive. You you are an impressive guy. Well. Thanks. Okay, so so Brandon, you went after John. Right? I did. How did you know about? Way. How did you know about John? How did that whole relationship uh, get started? I was started? looking. You know, I, you know. Obviously, John's right. I mean, I you know, I I, I saw it. I, I had started with a with a cigarette. You know, I bought a, a truck stop and I had thrown away my cigarettes and, and I said I had thrown away my cigarettes and I I thought, wow, this is a really really great idea, but the delivery is really bad. Um, not powerful enough, doesn't simulate smoking, um, you know, and, and then of course I started, you know, looking on the internet to see what was out there. Um, and at that time, really variable voltage was not, had not really taken. Um, and uh, people were building, you know, five volt boxes with, you know, TI linear regulators and things like that. So I started, you know, building those and I, you know, I had some ideas for a, what I wanted uh, as far as that goes and I, you know, I saw, you know, at that time I, I wanted to start a company. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to get into this. I thought, wow, this is a really young market, great, you know, great, but I hit a wall. I couldn't go any further. I had, you know, my, my technical expertise ended. So I started looking for people in the power, power electronics field that were a whole lot smarter than I was. Uh, and John was one of the names that I came up with. And it turned out that he was in Akron, Ohio. I, I'm from Ashton Bueller, Ohio. And I said, well, I, I gotta talk to this guy. You know, this is this is the guy I want. So I, I think I initially called and then emailed. He wouldn't talk to me. Just would not take a meeting with me. He wouldn't well, talk it's to not me. that I wouldn't talk to him. I just didn't want to meet because that's gonna cut up my whole day. Right. And, you know, right. a lot of, lot of, a lot of people. Many, many weeks later, uh, and much, many calls, and just me bugging the crap out of his girls here. And, uh, he did agree to meet, and, uh, and that's how we got started. I mean, it, it was really that, you know, that simple. I mean, it was, it was us meeting together, and then it took a, a while longer to convince John that there was something here. And that, you know. Right now, so that's a that's a question that I have now. John, you're you're not a vapor. No. You're not a smoker. I'm not a smoker or a vapor. So did you think that this guy is out of his mind? No, it was the okay. So <laughs> there had been rumblings for a while. So we tried to keep track of. What our, who our customers are because the company that I was running, I guess I still run, at that time, we do all components, sort of like Evolve does all components. Um, so you say, if we're making motor drivers, what are the motor drivers going into? So one of the things that our motor drivers go into is we're the number one supplier to people who are making R2-D2s. And you say, I didn't know there were people that make R2-D2s. And the first time somebody's making R2-D2s, well, that's weird. 
the fifth one, you're like, well, okay, that's a thing. By the 200th guy calls up, he's like, yeah, I'm ordering one of these, one of these. I'm like, and that means you're making an R2-D2, so let's skip right to the chase. So I've been hearing rumblings, people are like, yeah, it's kind of like a high power flashlight. And you're like, okay, by kind of you mean it's a high power flashlight. Well, no, but I don't want to get into it. So by the 10th one of those, who obviously those were people making the real early mods that were, you know, variable voltage via a screwdriver, things like that. Right. Um, you're like, okay, I guess I should sort of start looking into what's what these guys are actually doing so I can speak more intelligently to it. So Brandon wasn't the first or the second guy to be putting our stuff into a box mod. Okay, so, so, so your chips from your previous company yeah. were, were already being used in, in, in the... In, the, in uh, very early box mods, yes. Okay. So that's how that sort of came together. So you already knew about the industry at that point, well, somewhat. See, but I, well, I, I as did, much but as I the industry know. existed. I didn't know they were using as converters. I had no idea. Huh. Yeah. I mean, it was just that, you know, I had looked, I was looking for, you know, I was looking for somebody who, you know, was an expert in power electronics because I knew what I wanted. And, uh, you know, well, you had out. an Volt 3 based uh, box. No, I, I had that after we talked for the first time. Oh, okay. Right. Um, You're right. So, how did the Evolve start then? Where did the, how, where did the name come from? Um, and now I know you don't like to take credit for it, okay? But the reason why we all talk wattage today, okay, and variable wattage is because of the two guys that I'm talking to right now. Okay, so I will definitely give you credit for we that. We like to take credit for it. Yeah, we don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me John is more willing to take credit for it than you are. Well, but we did. But, but it's deservedly so. Yeah. Okay. So whose whose idea was that, and why such a radical um, difference in viewing this as to like what what was already out there? That was that was more John when we when we first sat down, um, seriously sat down. I think the first meeting was not as serious as the second meeting, but um, he said, you know, he said something very interesting. He said, you know. Pretend they don't exist. Pretending e-cigarettes don't exist. What's the better way to do this? What's the best way to do this? Okay. And that's where variable wattage was. Going. I mean, that was you know uh, in, in John's mind. Um, you know, and I took a little convincing actually. Um, I took a lot of convincing. Actually, actually I took a lot of convincing. convincing. <laughs> just wanted a little. Yeah, I wanted a variable voltage. You know. Okay, okay so it took convincing from John to you. To me, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Because and, it was a, uh, a radical he, different he way said, of looking. He at said, this. "Why aren't you controlling heat?" He said, "Why are why why are you why are you messing with both?" Um, and it took some convincing, but uh, you know, hence the I guess what you would call the the, you know, the the idea for regulated power was born that day. There, yeah. There's often value to being an outsider because you come at it and you look at it with fresh eyes. You're not saying, "Okay, well, everybody's done variable voltage," so they're like, "All right, well, everybody's doing variable voltage. That's great, but." Why? What's that get you? Where's? What are you really trying to control? And um, the other thing is coming at it from an outsider and from a perspective of we already do power control, blah blah blah. I think a lot of times when people are inside industries, and we fight with this more now because we're very much inside the industry. Um, I feel people don't ask the right questions. They they assume that what exists is what's possible. So you say, well, variable voltage because I can go to off the shelf and you know buy a voltage regulator from you know John's company, or I could buy one from TI, or I could get a Raptor or whatever. So people work to what's possible. Whereas if you come at it from a slightly different perspective, you have a different set of ideas as to what's possible. So sometimes in the interplay between those, it's, you get good stuff because. You know, maybe the construction industry has been doing something like this for years, and cars say, "Wait a minute, that would be that'd be great." I didn't know you could do that. It's like, well, why didn't you? Right. And then, I mean, the other thing is, just not even specifically for evolve, and certainly not specifically for wattage. You try to boil things down to what's actually happening, um, and voltage isn't what's actually happening. Wattage is what's actually happening. So if you can simplify that down and then control the actual physical processes, you can save a lot of hassle. And that's, that's really what we try to do 
And that's what we continue to trade. So, um, where did the uh, the evolved name come from? I, I, I really don't remember don't. having anything to do no. with that. <laughs> so neither of you created the well, name? No, no, I created the oh, no, name. No, I, 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 <laughs> no, that, no I, I definitely created the name, but I, I don't remember what the impetus was. I think I was just looking for something that encompassed, encompassed what we were trying to do. You know, by that time we, we had firmly rooted in the fact that we were, we, we were going to do this you know, power controlled mod, which was something that had not been done before, and, and, and you know, seemed to me to be an evolutionary step Evolution, okay. in, you know, in the e-cigarette. Um, it's one of the things that you know, John often talked about was he trying to solve the e-cigarette. Right. Solve it. And that was, I felt like that was the first step. So the name likely came out of that, if I could remember, I'd tell you. Okay. <laughs> but I, and the, uh, um, the Darwin was your very first product? The Darwin was our first product. Okay. How was it received? I think well by the people that bought it. Um, not so well by the people that saw it and thought, wow, this is something so completely different than anything we've ever seen. Right. Um, with a technology we don't quite understand. Right. Um, and we don't think it's going to work anyway. But, uh, well, it's not so much that we don't think it's going to work. We don't. We think you're blowing smoke. I. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe, vapor. Maybe, maybe that's it. Or <laughs> vapor. I mean, I think they. Yeah. I, I think people. People had a hard time engaging it because they didn't. Yeah, I, maybe they felt like it was a marketing. A marketing well, thing. but right. also nobody could get one. Yeah. So there's this jerk on the internet. It's like yeah. I spent a ridiculous amount of money for this e-cigarette with a totally different technology. You can't have one. Right. Good luck finding one. You'll right. never try it. <laughs> but it's so much better. And so I think, yeah. which wasn't That's necessarily how our users were presenting it. Right. But that was how it was being received. Because yeah. we only ever made a thousand of those. That was yeah. it. That was yeah. it. Yeah. And that was over the course of a year. So. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I, I think we I think we met with you know to that point everything on the market was round. We, we bring out this thing that looks so completely different that it, it it had a hard it had a hard time with acceptance. But you know that was built for function more than form. I mean you know we wanted something pocketable, yes, but we wanted you know and we threw a lot into that. And you have to remember that that, that opening and closing you know the on off. All of this stuff was stuff nobody had ever seen before. And this was this thing came out of left field. I mean, it didn't follow any of the the previous sort of design molds that e-cigarettes came out of. And I think that that sort of it, it benefited us in the long run, but in the short term, you know, it, it surprised people, and then they're like, "Ooh, yeah, what's that? Ooh, that doesn't look like an e-cigarette." Right. You know, right. I, I would say with the Darwin, we were doing so many new things. We weren't really going back and categorizing. Okay, this is the first box mod. Right. 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 This is the first and last flippy arm. This is the first graphical <laughs> screen on a right. mod. Right. This is the first mod yeah. running on lipos. This is the first mod with the USB charger. This is the first mod that shows you the ohms on the screen. This is the first mod that's variable wattage, obviously. This is the first mod, but you know it was. So there were a lot of firsts. There were in that, there were a lot device, of firsts yeah. with the Darwin, and a lot of those have stuck around. And the flippy arm has. Right. <laughs> the flippy arm. <laughs> the flippy arm definitely has not stuck around. So now your next uh, product is the kick, right? That was the yeah the kick. Now to that to that point, nobody had picked up power regulation. Nobody had uh, you know had, had come out with anything else that was power regulated, and, and we saw. It. We saw a need for that, you know, just in the, in the number of two months that we're out, and it worked nicely. It gave people regulation, power regulation, in a, in a tube form. They didn't have to change anything about the mod. It didn't change the look of the mod. Right. Um, and yeah, it was clever. It was clever. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think it it pulled us away from the Darwin a little bit. You know, I mean, uh, and you know, people started to take us. I think if you release one product in this market or any market for that matter, you know, if you don't have a follow-up product, it's hard. You know. It, it, it's hard to take you serious, and I think people at that point started to say, "Well, hey, who are these, these guys? guys? Yeah, who are yeah. these guys? They might be around. You know, they might yeah. be sticking around." Well, I think they take you seriously at this point. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. well yeah. but the other thing is with the kick, we were much more playing to our strengths with the Darwin. You know, interesting electronic board with a few first product quibbles that <laughs> you can get into if you want. Um, machined case, anodized, assembled, we were making our own atomizer connectors, we were, whereas the kick we really simplified to, we're primarily an electronics manufacturer, and by we I mean really my other company at that point, um, so we can make electronics, 
we could sort of make cases, but not in any sort of quantity and not with the, you know, there, some of them had some gapping and blah, blah, blah. So the kicks relative to the Darwin, we could bang those out. And people could just get them, drop them in, and see immediately a apples to apples comparison. Without a kick, my device performs like this. With a kick, my device performs a whole lot better. So there wasn't the, well, I'm wedded to this uh, GLV or whatever right. was going on at the right. time. It was just, this is my same device, better. Right. Right. You know, you're you're shopping for sexy lingerie rather than a whole new life. Right. Um, don't put that on the video. <laughs> <laughs> so now I think there were some other products. Okay, but then the DNA 20. Well, there was only one. There was one. There was it was DNA, DNA 12. 12. The DNA 12. Yeah. Okay. Which Sold okay. Sold okay. Sold okay. It didn't sell like the kick even, and they were the DNA twelve and the kick one were yeah. kissing cousins. They were, it was really the same circuitry in a different form factor right. with a couple of little changes. Okay, yeah. but then the twenty comes out, yeah. and things must really take off at that point. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Uh, I think we weren't sure. We weren't sure how that that board was going to be received. I mean, there weren't really, to my knowledge, there wasn't anyone at that point selling. Ports and ports, modules. Right. Into so I wanted to ask you that. Was there a, a, a decision must have been made at some point to say, okay, we are going to deliver this as a board for people to use as opposed yeah. to we are going to deliver a device that uses our board? Oh, I think I think that decision was made that prior, decision. prior to the kick. I mean, I, I think... That, yeah, that, yeah, that really was... Yeah. The decision was made prior to the kick. Um, just because... With the Darwin, what we were doing really well was technology. Right. What we were doing really poorly was assembly. Right. Okay. So, yeah. and there were plenty of other people even back then, you know, the wood mods that were custom crafted and whatnot, there were plenty of people who were doing assembly well. Right. But they didn't have beans to put in it in terms of technology. So they were tactile button with no regulation or, you know. And again, it played to the strength of, the, you know, of where we were. Right. You know, I, I don't think we wanted to be in the modern market again. I mean, it just, you know, it wasn't like like John said. I mean, the, the electronics were a much better fit. Right. And there was a need. I mean, I think that, you know, no, no one was out there designing specifically for this industry. So, now the DNA 30 comes out, mm -hmm. right? Have you noticed an increase in sales from your Darwin to your kick? Your kick two, your DNA twenty, is it? A yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, relative to the Darwin, the kick sold well more than an order of magnitude more than that. Um, the DNA thirty has sold well more than an order of magnitude more than that. Right. So we're more than DNA thirties. We're doing more than a hundred times as many as we do in Darwin. Yeah. Okay. Talk about safety and talk about some of the things that are built into your products that 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 speak to safety. Okay. Um, I guess I see that's a hard question for me to answer because and again I don't know how much of this will have to get edited out just for public relations. Right. I don't feel like we do anything ridiculously over the top in terms of safety. I feel like some other people may be being egregiously irresponsible. If you buy other consumer products, they'll be doing, you know, a number of things to make an inherently safe product. So I don't think that what we're doing is so much laudable as if you're not doing at least that much, you're recklessly endangering your users. Okay. Right. Um, I mean, I, I think that you can short it and it doesn't catch fire. It's a nice feature, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's also... Well, that, that's somewhat true. I mean, you know, the battery monitoring, the battery, the battery protection, I mean, nobody else was doing that, but... It, but I, I see that as more a extension of let's do this right, right. Yeah. rather than let's half-ass this and hope nobody gets hurt. Right. Okay. Um, okay. But so I mean, yeah, you, I mean, you guys have done things in your devices that I haven't seen in other devices. So in other devices, we get down to 3.3, 3.2 volts, boom, it shuts down, that's it. 
right? But you look at SAG too. I mean, there are different aspects of, of, of what's oh, yeah, going on with yeah, the batteries now, yeah, right? We, we try to monitor, you know, the, the health of the battery as well. Right. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, as the, as the battery degrades, and which all batteries do as soon as you start using them. Right. Uh, you know, once they get to a certain level, it becomes less safe. We'll not call it unsafe, but we'll call it less safe to run. Okay. Well, but I think that's delivering a excellent user experience because even if I mean there are things we do not so much to keep it from catching fire but if you're mod every 10 charge cycles you got to throw your $15 battery out yeah. how's that helping your user out any if we can right. cut it off so that you don't get 15 charge cycles if you get 100 charge cycles out of it you're not going to be on vacation and then be like oh well I got to see if I can find some sort of a store selling something because all of a sudden, I'm getting an hour's worth of charge, and I'm at the beach, and an hour ain't gonna cut it. Right. Um, so I think more than I mean, we're certainly focused on safety, but I think more than that, we're focused on delivering a consistently excellent user experience. And anything that's unsafe is, in my opinion, anyway, the antithesis of a consistently excellent user experience. If you have an excellent user experience until your house burns down. That's it's no longer an excellent user experience. <laughs> right. But well, we've taken it on the chin too, in the in the market a little bit for that. Yeah. You know, um, you know with the kick especially. I mean, that, that's the one that jumps right out at me. But even with the DNA products, you know, if they're coming at three, you know, three three point two under load, people felt that was way too high. But you know, one of the things that I tried to do was get out in front of that, you know, a little bit and say, look, there's a reason we're doing this because that's you know that's a safe discharge level for your IMR battery. Going much below that, you're going to damage the battery. Right. Um, and but but I think because there were so many other products out there that, that let you go well beyond that you know, to the point where you were damaging the battery, they weren't. You know, it wasn't met with. But we, we held the line on that. I mean, that was something we weren't. We were going to be firm about. We weren't going to just go ahead and you know willy nilly drop that number just because people weren't happy with it. Right. Um, and, and I think we've held that pretty well. I think we've held that safety standard all the way across. Yeah. John may call it you know just a you know, a medium level, but I, I feel like it's you know something that nobody else nobody else is doing, and you know, right. important enough to keep doing. Okay. Uh, even even through all the you know, uh, all the stabby emails that say you know <laughs> my, I can't vape as long as I can on this or that or the other. My mech model let yes. me go all the way to oh, yeah, zero yeah, voltage, right. <laughs> so I can get twenty yeah. percent longer battery yeah. life. Yeah, right. And they're disposable, you know. Yeah, I am our batteries. Okay, so I'm actually doing a little building here as I edit this video because if I don't multitask, I can't keep up with that guy right there. Um, so let's pause the interview here uh, for the moment and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at their first facility uh, because this is definitely going to be a two-part video. Uh, so the uh, the board at this point has already been assembled. Well, not assembled, but all of the components and everything have been put on it. Uh, but now we got to add the screen and we have to do some testing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the assembly uh, facility they have at Ashtabula, which is a much smaller facility. Um, and then we'll probably wrap this video up and uh, start off with the um, the actual board production facility that they have in Akron. Okay, so let's take a look at Ashtabula. Ashtabula? Ashtabula first. All right, so this is your assembly facility. It is. All right, and uh, why don't you walk me through this and tell me okay. what's going on here. Uh, well, right now they're just... What, what, gets, us, what gets assembled in this? this uh, uh, DNA 30 screens. Okay. We put on DNA 30 screens and we also do um, kick tubes. Okay. Uh, right now we're in a mode of doing DNA 30 screens. So, uh, okay. We haven't done kick twos for a little while, so we're uh, you know we're getting caught up on the back orders on the DNA 30s. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, right, here we go. Um, this facility was we, we originally opened it to to make kick twos, mm -hmm. um, at least the assembly portion of the kick twos, and uh, we've now kind of transitioned into um, putting on the screens and doing the testing for the DNA 30s. Okay. So this is our Evolve North, we call it. Evolve North. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of two facilities. Um, Becky right here is putting on um, screens on the DNA 30s. Okay, I mean, that's pretty much all we do. Hi, Becky. Hi. Are you having fun? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, and did you say that just because Brandon is standing behind you? No <laughs> comment. <laughs> okay, so you put those in your little jig there. She's manually attaching screens. Okay. Um, we have two, two ways of attaching. One is manual, the other is... 
Okay, so there, there's two ways we're doing this here. It's, it's right. manually or uh, with the machine. Right. And we're going to see the machine in a bit. It's a uh, flux. That's flux. Flux, okay. The H screen pins, they, uh, they already have solder on them. Okay. They flux on the red cable. <clears throat> Okay, so then you just solder them on. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> Exciting stuff there. It is. <laughs> I love to see the behind the scenes, you yeah, know, how, how yeah. everything how comes together. Made. Yeah, oh. how it's made, right. Now, There's a show like that. Felicia's putting on <laughs> uh, putting on screens via one of our machines. We have another machine like this up in Akron. Okay. Okay, so we're doing the same thing here that we did same before, thing. but only this software. is via machine. Mm -hmm. Okay. See what's going on. The yields are better with the machine. Okay. Um, I think we were just discussing it earlier because of the consistent heat for the length of time that, right. you know, it's a good length of time, it's about six seconds. But there's no difference in the quality of the one no. versus the other, okay. Nothing leaves this facility if it does not work okay. perfect. Okay, and that's your job, right? That's right, it's part of his job. Justin. Part of his job, <laughs> okay. Steve is also the tech support. Okay. Uh, so anyone that has, uh, that, that comes in through the website with a question or anything like that, Steve's our, Steve's our first line. If he can't answer it, then I do. Okay. So when the calls come in, they go to you, Steve, huh? Yeah, yeah, most of the time. I, I'm obviously not as technically uh, knowledgeable about the product as Brandon is, so anything that's over my head goes directly to him, and he's very good about answering. What if it's over his head? Uh, <laughs> then it goes to John. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what do, what do you do here? Well, this is the testing. Uh, after everything the screen's put on, um, it all comes to me on trays. I put it into the test mechanism. It goes in. There's a load put to them. Uh, I make sure I fire each one. Okay. Um, we check the resistance to make sure that it all fires at the same because it's a four volt load. Okay. Um, and then after it's fired, I check the up down buttons to make sure that it's functioning correctly. All right. And then uh, they go in the tray for transportation and and shipment to uh, customers. Okay. From there. So every single board gets tested. Absolutely. Okay. Everyone. And if one does happen to fail this test, it goes back to the uh, to the ladies to uh, you know redo the screen. Right. Okay. And then and then it's tested again before it goes out. If it fails again, then yeah. they'll replace the screen. Right. And, and go from there. Now, is there a certain number of screen uh, failures before you start to get mad at these two, or? <laughs> No. no, no, no. So there's and, no yelling. There's no. <laughs> no. Okay. And, and you know, and there are times when when they don't the screen. You can replace the screen six times, and it just won't. it's just a bad right bad it's part. Just, it just happens. Right. But, you okay. know, it, it's very very low percentage of right of times that, that does that. Most okay. of the time, if if it is a problem, the board will fire just fine. Um, it's a screen issue. Right. And then it's repaired and it moves on from there. Okay. So cool. And I know you make a whole lot of noise over there with your sandpaper. What are you doing over there? Can you? Can <laughs> you, you have show to me? sand the. Um, right. So they, they don't come they individual. Come in they come in panels, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to break them apart. And the edges are jagged okay. and kind of rough looking. Right. So to make them look pretty, you sand it. Okay. That's the noise that you're making. Mm -hmm. there, yeah. All right. So what else we got in this facility here? Uh, well, uh, when we were making kicks. Um, I guess we can show you this. This is this is how uh, this is how we received the, the the tops. And what we did was we populated these with uh, the two pins, um, the the center pin, and the potentiometer. And what mm -hmm. we would do is over here at this station, they would uh, put bismuth paste onto all these spots, put on the components. Which there's the components. There's the components. Yeah. Uh, there we go. There's our. So our screens, there's our potentiometers, um, which we, uh, which come in pre-trimmed from a vault set. <laughs> and uh, and now just just to note, because mm -hmm. at this point uh, in the video, the people haven't seen the other facility. Okay. Right. So all of these things that you're showing me, all of the things that they're putting together, yes. they're all being made at your other facility. That is right? correct. So we're going to see that too. Absolutely. Exciting stuff. Absolutely. All right. 
So let's go. So once everything is is put together on that uh, that board and the base, we right. go into this room here. Right. And what would we have here? This is a reflow oven. This is just an old quad reflow oven that we, uh, we you know, with the bismuth paste, with all the components pasted on them. You would uh, there's a there's a fixture that would go here. They would set these down. Okay. They go through there. They slide up the ramp at the end uh, onto the table, and these would be finished tops for the kick tubes. Okay. Okay. Now the kick tube top and bottoms are joined by hand solder, so those are, those are the solder stations you saw out there, so we, we hand solder those um, together, and then they would go, uh, they go into conformal coat, which is, we do our conformal coating here, and then we cure our conformal coating in this. Uh, okay, t tell everybody what conformal coating okay, is. Okay, conformal coating is uh, waterproofing for the electronics, so all the kick twos are uh, more or less waterproof. Right. So if you get juice on your kick two, there's no worries. It's, it's still going to fire fine. Um, we can formal coat all of our electronics, including the DNA 30, DNA 20. Um, everything is conformal coated here. Okay. It comes out of this this facility. So it's all pretty much liquid proof. It is all liquid proof. Okay. You can actually fire if you could. You know, you can't obviously can't submerge a battery, but you can actually fire a DNA 30 underwater. Don't tempt me because I, I've done <laughs> I've done all underwater videos and I'll do one yeah. for yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the DNA 30 um, and the DNA 20 both. Um, you know, are fully conformal coated. So, okay. You know, the screen probably wouldn't handle it, but the rest of it. Right, probably, right. Yeah. And the the button too. I would no, imagine. No, buttons are all waterproof. Oh, are they? 100% waterproof. Not okay. just water resistant. They're waterproof. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's why we buy those very I'm expensive French that. buttons. So very expensive yeah. French buttons. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. The testing fixture for the kicks is right here. Okay. Uh, we're obviously not making kick twos right now, but uh, these are the. Uh, what you would do is line line the kick twos up. Okay. Flop that down, and then we have uh, we take a reading uh, from it. We tested it. Uh, Wattages. Okay, so just like fire. just like all the other boards, everything, every piece is yeah. tested before it goes out. Oh, absolutely! Okay. Every single piece gets tested before. Now, is this where assembly for the upcoming uh, Inigan boards are going to be done as well? Or? No, actually, those uh, those are without screens, so they won't come here. Uh, Inigan is actually putting their own screens on, so okay. they will uh, they'll come directly out of our Akron facility. Okay, yeah. so so the boards will come out of there, and then Inigan's going to put their own screens on. Inigan's putting their own screens on. Okay. All right, cool. So I guess now to our next stop. Okay. And what what location are we in now? You're in the Ashtabula Evolve. Okay. Facility. And we are going to. We're going to Akron. Awesome. Yep. Thank you. No problem. So that is the end of part one, and we saw some cool stuff in part one, but the really cool stuff is in part two. So what are you waiting for? Go check it out. Can I taste your juice?